I think those are Rinpoche. Uh, but, uh, hello. Hello. I think those uh, are... Can you... Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Great, 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 great. Okay, so, yeah, so... Uh, hello. Yeah, so... Okay. Hello. Hi, we can hear you and we can see you now. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. So now, the, can you just remind uh, remind me about uh, today's the topic? Uh, Rinpoche, I think you said you would either speak about anger or losar. I'm not sure. You finished the six yogas of Naropa last time. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So what will uh, today I will do is that okay today because of the uh, we celebrated the Nibbana New Year. So I will explain a few minutes about the uh, New Year celebration. Then I will come back to the how to with the anger management. Okay, how you can manage the anger. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Am I clear? Yes. Okay. Great. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, today there will be some one my student might join. Okay. Today in the class, and uh, not from the state, out of the state. Hello. Wonderful. Yeah. That wonderful repertoire. Okay. Everyone's welcome. Okay. 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 Great. Okay. So, okay, so now the last time as we talked that uh, we are celebrated, uh, last time we celebrate the new year. So that is the more new Tibetan, normally the Tibetan new year celebration of the Tibetan new year. Can you hold the one second? Can you hold the one second? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, okay, so the, okay, what's happening is that, okay, so uh, last time we're celebrating the new year and uh, so I will talk a little bit about the new year celebration, then I will come to talk back to the anger management. Okay. Hello. Yes. yes. Clear, no? Yes. Okay, great, great, great. Okay. So now the thing is that the New Year, normally that the to pattern the New Year, the celebration, it's, uh, if you look back to the history, it's goes uh, quite long, quite long. Mainly that the New Year celebration, the how the to pattern New Year celebration is a bit of the chaos. And a lot of the things have to be done before the new year, especially the arranging the offering. So especially the arranging the offering and a uh, uh, few things are very important for the celebration for the new year. So the number one is the offering, the offering to the three jewels and the offering for the Buddha, the offering. The second thing is that uh, then they have to set up with the defense of the ritual cake. Yeah, does it make any sense though when I see the ritual cake? I'm not so sure that uh, it is the more, it's like a ritual cake and it's made with the different, I mean, the, I mean the, it have the different size. So most important among the ritual cake is that they call the ritual cake called the donkey ear cake. Donkey ear cake. So it's a bit a long one. So we will offer that and we'll set up that. Then we have to keep the one, the ship hat, animal ship hat, whether it's made with the butter or the made with the whatever, the ceramic or the whatever, we have to keep the one ship hat on the table. 
then the then the we will keep the rice and uh, there is a uh, one <clears throat> there is a uh, one particular thing i think you won't get that in the any other country that's called the i don't know how to translate that the english it's called the toma toma <clears throat> toma and uh, it is only it grow only in tibet only in tibet you won't find that in any other country in the world normally normally that uh, in the america you will get the restaurant of the every country's restaurant every country is the restaurant but uh, every country food but i don't think you will get toma in america that's the uh, yeah one time i i one time that uh, i was always used to tell that i was always make the joke about that the uh, foods in america america you will get the every country's food but not the original one in america what you have the indian food that is i used to tell on the indian food indian food at all there's a fusion no you was having the fusion food so yeah so so now this is the yeah, mainly that that uh, called the toma it's a normally it considers as a auspicious food so that's why the, it's having the auspicious food so we will keep that on the table and the serve to the people so right now the why we uh, right now the what we do isn't that the, at the new year morning so when people serve you the that uh, rice with you what you have to do is that you have to throw the rice up in the sky three times small piece of the rice three times in the sky that is the symbolizing the offering for the three jewels and the or three times in the sky so yeah so i need a one volunteer so i need a volunteer and i want to show you the how you have to throw it okay mm -hmm. this is mainly that my hand position okay can you see me can you all see me Hello. Yes, we can see you, Rinpoche. Okay, so what you have to do is that whenever they serve you the rice or some that the New Year day, you have to throw it with the catch with the three finger like this way, and then you have to throw like this three times in the sky. Okay, this is like a for offering for the three jewels. Then you have to take a little bit. Am I clear? Okay. So in case, okay, that is the, okay, three times in the sky, like this way, three times in the sky, then you have to eat a little bit. So that is more offering for the three jewels, okay? Three jewels and this is a, like a very traditional, traditions, okay, traditions, yeah. Okay, so that is the thing. Then the later that, later that uh, what we do is that the later that, then they serve you the tsampa. You know, the tsampa is the main food of the Tibetan. So they serve the tsampa. So even the tsampa, you have to throw three times in the sky, then you have to eat a little bit of the tsampa. So that is uh, more like a considered as um, offering three jewels and uh, offering for three jewels and <clears throat> offering, yeah, uh, three jewels and uh, uh, to receive the blessing. After the offering, you have to take a little bit of receive it. That is the main, main I mean, the things that uh, what you have to do the, while you are celebrating the, celebrating the Losa, no? celebrating the New Year. Okay, okay. So just thought to talk a little bit about the way of the celebration. Now today I will come back to the our main topic, the anger, the managing the anger, no anger managing. Okay. So now the here that the window anger managing program. So here the main thing is that the, I will talk with a few steps. Okay few steps that are now the what we have to do generally that when you look at the our the negative emotions mainly the our negative emotions such like the anger mainly it rises because with the two reasons two reasons two reasons mainly two reasons number one is in you are not controlling it you are not controlling it and you are not applying the antidote for the anger that is the number one reason number two is the because of the habituation these are the two main reasons Habituation is something like that uh, when you get, when you do something more than the twice, then slowly it will become your habit. Once it's become your habit, it will come spontaneously, it will come. When someone used a very harsh word towards you, you your reaction, you'll get the angry. We all get angry because of the, that's a habituation. I have the one very interesting thing to, to share with you. That, that's a quite long back. We are doing the one of research. 
with the uh, parapsychology scientists from the Britain, and we are doing the research regarding about the abilities of the mind, whether their mind have any potential to see the future. That well, the research field is uh, like that. But the, my main point is here while I'm discussing with the parapsychology scientists, the parapsychology scientist was telling me that the, like an animal snake, normally animal snake, they don't have like an emotion, like an anger. So when was someone says just like a teasing the snake or someone trying to hit the snake, they will get react. That comes with the instinct. That's their reaction, not because of they're generating the uh, negative emotion like anger. But that is the totally. I mean, that is a, some like a very. That is a very big. I mean, the, uh, why I'm uh, why I'm telling you this is a, this is the one very big. I mean, the, I mean the uh point or this is some very i mean the important or the, this is the some very uh point to be the discuss with the parapsychology scientists and uh, buddhism because the, from buddhism perspective from the buddhism perspective even the animal like a snake they have the anger even they generate the anger when someone approach near to it when someone enter into the, their own space they will get unhappy with and they will react it. That is a reaction that comes from their anger. So that's why the, if you see the ancient the Buddhist I mean, the painting, you will see the three different animals, like a pig, snake, and the bird. And the, these three animals eating each other, eating each other. So a bird is symbolizing the attachment and the snake is symbolizing anger, pig is symbolizing the ignorance. So what the main point is that the, if you look at the attachment, anger, and ignorance, these three negative emotions is like a chicken and egg. Anger comes from the attachment, attachment comes from the ignorance. It is like a chicken and egg circle. So now, the, as I mentioned before, the why we are generating the anger is mainly because of the two reasons. Number one, we are not controlling and we are not applying the antidote for the anger, number one. Number two, <clears throat> number two is that because of the, our habituation. Once you get angry, and when you let it get angry again and again, the slowly the anger will become your habit. So someone use a harsh word towards you, then you will react it. That you react it, and you will get generate the anger. That will be your first reaction. So now the here that now the what we have to do is now the managing the anger. Managing the anger. The first thing is the first the managing anger is that that the first step is that what you have to do is that the first you, as I mentioned the before. <clears throat> what you have to do is the first thing is that you have to come with the meditation. Meditation is uh, something like that. As I, uh, I uh, as I mentioned before, we talk lots about the meditation. Today, this meditation is a very simple one that you just have to inhale or exhale the breath and the focusing on the breath. Okay, focusing on your breath, inhale or exhale, focus on your breath. So now the one thing that here you have to do the one training. Okay, what training you have to do is that the one training is the. Mm, now the first thing is that that uh, focus on breath. Okay, that is the one thing. Now the second thing is that the uh, second thing is that the, you have to <clears throat> think again and again with the thing again and again the negative points of the anger. Negative points of the anger is uh, whenever you generate the anger, you won't experience joy. You won't experience peace. So there is uh, one very famous saying of the. Shanti Deva in the Bodhisattva Avatar Acharya that the, he have mentioned that. Are you all following me? Yes. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. If you get any question, then you can ask me anytime. Okay. If you are not very clear, okay, let me know. Okay. Hmm? Okay. So. <clears throat> so. Okay. So that the uh, what is so the point is that okay. So what is the uh, uh, hello. Yeah. Okay. So, so now the when you are now the thing is that when meditating and the, also what you have to do is uh, you have to look the all the negative points of the anger. Just see that the negative points of the anger. Whenever he or she generate the anger, he or she will never experience the joy and the peace. That's that's. Statement as mentioned in Bodhisattva Avatar Charya. So that will be good that uh, if you can read the patient chapter of the Bodhisattva Avatar Charya, the patient chapter. 
in the book called the Bodhisattva Abhutaracharya, written by the ancient the Nalanda the scholar Shantideva. So what you all, yeah, that is the second point. What you have to do is that the, you have to think again and again the negative points of the anger. Okay. Now the here, the now you have to do the one training. What training you have to do is that the, now while you are sitting or the, then you just visualize the person whom you really dislike. Okay. Whom you really dislike and the whom you really hate. Okay. So. I always throw the one joke. I always throw the one joke and the people, some people used to tell me that uh, they don't have uh, any person whom they hate. They don't have uh, such a person whom they dislike. So I always tell the one joke to them. I always tell them, okay, think about the election. Then you will find someone. <laughs> so so, this, so now the point is that uh, here, the, now the point is that uh, what you have to do is that the thing, the person whom you dislike, thing, the person whom you hate, visualize that. When you're visualizing that, when suddenly, when you generate the dislike and the anger, because this is the very tricky dislike, then if you cannot control that the dislike, then the, you will generate the anger. Dislike and the anger, okay? This is, you have to be the very, very careful. From the Buddhist perspective, dislike is okay. That's not a wrong thing. Just in my own experience, when I, I have, a, from the Buddhist practitioner, being as a Buddhist practitioner, we have to generate the compassion toward all of the sentient beings, compassion. Like for me, it's a very difficult to generate the love towards the love and like, especially the animal crocodile. I don't know, whenever I see the crocodile, I see, so sometimes I get dislike with the crocodile because of the, it eats a lot of the, attacked a lot of the innocent, I mean, the animals, no, who comes to drink the water. But the day is a like, it's a very difficult for me. But I generate the compassion. But that I generate the compassion towards a crocodile. I always pray that may the crocodile be the happy, may the crocodile the elaborate from suffering. But for me, if you keep the two animals like a crocodiles and a horse or any other animals, my like, and the much more towards the horse and these all animal, no? But the here, the what main point, what I'm trying to tell you is that from the dislike, when you person, when you dislike the someone, if you don't con if you don't control that dislike, then slowly it will generate the anger. So that's why the here, what I'm saying is that uh, you just visualize the person whom you really, you dislike or hate. Whenever, when you generate the anger, whenever you generate the dislike, then you don't have to think about that person. Just look into the, that emotion, that emotion what you have generated, that anger or dislike, just watch in that emotion. When you look at the, that emotion, when you look at the, that emotion, watch it, that emotion, slowly that emotion will the disappear. This is the what second thing you have to do. Or whenever you generate the anger, whenever you generate the dislike, then you concentrate or meditate on your breath. Start to count the breath up till the 10. This is the very helpful tactic, technique. Whenever you generate the dislike or anger, suddenly remind yourself that, that now you have to tell yourself, oh, I'm generating the anger. I'm generating the dislike. Then you have to change your focus, shift your focus and start to count your breath. Okay, think that, okay? Now that is the practice what you have to do. Most that this is the practice mainly. It's a, just like a teaching you be be aware. Okay, awareness. Okay, generating the awareness. Okay, generating the awareness. Okay, there is the one very interesting story that the about, about the awareness that the, there is <clears throat> that is a come. <clears throat> there is a one monk, very old monk, and the old monk and the one is a very young monk. Young monk. They are both are they are just went to the one town and while they are coming back on the riverside when the riverside they saw the one young girl very young girl very young girl and the young girl and the, she could not cross that cross the river well the while the young girl and the, she could not cross the river they, there's a two monk old monk and the young monk so what he did is that the, the young monk just carried the girl back of him and she he just called cross the river while he was crossing the river and they went, but the hours, the old monk didn't talk with the young monk. Then hours later, the old monk told the young monk that what he did is not right. 
you should not carry the young girl on your back while crossing the river. Then the young monk told the old monk that I only to left the girl on the river bank. You are still carrying the young girl in your mind. So this is the one very interesting story. What I'm saying that when there's awareness, no, when you it is not that awareness, alertness, awareness is important. See, it's showing that. So that is the awareness. Is the awareness is something like that? Whenever you generate the anger, you should be alert. You should be aware that you are generating the anger. Once you get aware that you are generating the anger, then you can apply the antidote. So that's why the, what I'm saying is when you're visualizing or when you think about the person whom you dislike, when you're thinking the person whom you dislike, this is the way you have to learn that the, when, when you generate the anger. So most of the cases that the person when, uh, when, they, when they get unhappy or the, someone use the harm food or the, whatever happens, first they will generate the anger, they will react, they will shout. And the later on, they will realize that, oh, what they did is not right. And they will get regret with their regret, regret, regret with their, what they, their action. Because of, mainly because of they could not realize or they could not aware that when they generate anger. So when none, what I'm saying is that you visualize the person whom you dislike, then visualize that whenever you generate anger, aware that, that you generate anger. Then inhale or exhale the breath. Concentrate on breath. Inhale or exhale the breath. Count up till the 10. Then concentrate on the breath. Okay. That is the second step. What you have to do. Okay. Now the third step. Third step is that something like that. that you have to look at what is the root cause of the anger. Root cause. <coughs> anger is a very much related with the, your the ego very much related to the ego. Sometimes when it hurts your ego, sometimes when it hurts your ego, definitely you will generate the anger. That is the hurting the ego. So that's why the, it's very important to drop your ego. Once you can drop your ego, then only that, then only you can eliminate the anger. So that's why, you know, the prostration, when you're prostrate, when you're bowing your hand or the bowing your, sorry, the bowing your hand down and the touching your palm, that is symbolizing that I'm dropping my ego. I'll drop my ego. So when you touch your palm and the bow your hand, that means I'm dropping your ego. So that's why the dropping the ego is the something. Now the here the question comes, how you can drop the ego? How you can drop the ego? So ego is the dropping the ego is the, I will give you the one, uh, one story. That's a quite long back story in my home. So normally my mother's always complain about my father. Lots of times they complain. And the, sometimes my father, it's very difficult to accept the whole complaint, no? whatever the wrong thing she says. So then I told the, my father, just say that in the Tibetan words, we call the wore. Wore means that that's right, that's right. So I told my uh, father that the, whatever my mother said, you just agree with her. Just say, that's right, that's right, that's right. So it really helped a lot. Before what's happening, whenever my mother complained, my father, he cannot accept the complaint. Accept the complaint and the, he will try to explain. When he tried to explain, the things goes the more, I mean, the different direction. Then the, sometimes they argue and the, sometimes the, the, they will, I mean, the argues and the debate will start. So then I asked him, the, whatever my mother say, you don't have to say anything. Just say, that's right, hold it. That's right, that's right. Initially, it was very difficult to my father to say, that's right. Because that they, he had that ego, no? so that because of the ego. So later on, it went so well, that's why. That then slowly that became the habituation with my father. Sometimes he don't listen to whatever my mother says. He would say, oh, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. One day, my mother was asking about what he liked to have for the supper, no, at the lunch. He didn't listen very carefully to what my mother was saying. He just said, oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> so that is, the, that is the point that the, some dropping the ego. Sometimes that the, when you, first thing is the dropping the ego, you have to listen to very well. When you are having the sometimes the when you are having the ego, sometimes you cannot listen to others talk. Second thing is you got a lot of prejudice, prejudice, and the, you will bring the, your own theories and you will bring the, your own way of the thinking. So lots of the 
um, and the prejudice will come because of the ego. So that's why the, you have dropping the ego. The first thing is you have to listen the other's perspective very well. Second thing is that the second thing is that you have to try to look from the other's perspective. Look from the other's perspective, others the problem, others the difficulty side. Then it will make you much easier to drop your ego. Because right now the we will, because so right now the only thing is that we see is from the our own problem. We see is look from the our own perspective. So when you look from the your own perspective, it's uh, you will always feel that the you are the right. Because you're looking from the your perspective. When you learn to how to look from the other's perspective, then the one thought will come, they might be also right. When you think they might be also right, then it will be easier for you to drop your ego. So that's why the now when you now the what I'm saying is the dropping the ego. Okay. So dropping the ego, that is the one thing. Second thing is that the uh, sorry, that, that is dropping the now the third thing is that the, always the Buddhism that we always say talk about the compassion and the love and compassion. Now the mostly that we generate the anger toward the person because of the anger toward the person that is sometimes you because the sometimes the such a conditions happens that the, which you really don't I mean the, which you cannot accept which a condition which happens and which you cannot accept that also trigger your anger. So some condition happens in which you cannot accept that triggers your anger. So that's why the, it's very important to generate the, the compassion, love and compassion toward the person whom really sometimes when you get makes you angry. So that's why the, when you, how you can generate the love and compassion toward that person. The best way to generate the love and compassion toward that person is think the problem, think the suffering of the, that person, think the difficulty of the, that person. That makes you the very easy to generate the, I mean, the love and compassion. Okay, so that's why the that's why the in the Buddhism it talks about the suffering of the whole the universe, suffering about all the sentient beings. So when you think the suffering of the others, it will be very easy for you to generate the compassion or the love toward that person. So that's why it's a okay. Now most of the time you get angry with the someone very close to you. So that's why the, it's very important sometimes that general practicing the compassion, love and compassion to persons who are the close by you. So to close by the person, you have to think the more suffering, more I mean the problem of the, that person who the close by you, then it will make you easier to generate the love and compassion toward that. So now the, the one, uh, one point is that, I mean, that that's a very long back in the one hospital. I introduced the meditation, especially meditation for the people who are facing with the depression or the anxiety. But the very interesting thing about that is that before the, when you're there joining the, the program, my program, the doctors, especially the doctors, and the, they have give them the one, the questionnaire paper, that through that questionnaire paper, what they do is that they will measure the anxiety labels of the participant, anxiety labels through the questionnaire. From that, since that time, I was just thinking that the, why don't we make the same cautionary paper to measure the label of the compassion. So right now, it's a very easy to go and ask the, the doctors and they all have a cautionary paper and they can tell you you are having the anxiety or depression or stress or how, how severe you are having the depression. But they are not such a things that the, they cannot the, measure the label of our compassion. I'm pretty sure that the person who are the compassion label is a very high. I'm pretty sure that these people will have a less stress, less anger in their negative emotion. So that's why the that's why it's a, that that's why the third point is a very important to generate that the, also the com love and compassion. That also you have to meditate the love and compassion. That is a meditation that you all know that no giving and taking meditation. It's a very important giving the taking meditation. Also, that will be very nice that the, if you have the some, it's also very important that the, especially that the, it's very important to the investing the time. So uh, especially it's very nice to the person whom you are talk. So it's a very important for the person whom you are talk. Sometimes the person whom you are talking with the very, I mean, the cheerful and the, when you're having the talk with the person whom you love sometimes it's a very healthy that spending the time with the person whom you love not maybe five minutes ten minutes that's a very healthy um, i should say that that is a very really good way that it will help you bring the anxiety and the negative negative emotions 
it will bring the downs your negative and emotion so that's why the buddha what we're saying the community you know sangha buddha told the sangha sangha is a something like a very right community right community because the anger is the sometimes when you when you feel the anger and when you are towards anger to someone then whom you talk is a very important Sometimes you talk with the people, with the negative people, who are the person who have a lot of negative thoughts. When you share with them, sometimes they will generate the more, I mean, the, sometimes they will put the more fuel in the fire, no fuel in your anger. So they will talk more negative things about the person whom you dislike. That will also create the more angers in your mind. So that's why the, what I'm saying is that in the day to day life, it's a very important when you talk with the right person, maybe five to 10 minutes person who are having the more positive thoughts and the, who are having the more, more I mean, the compassion. That's a five to 10 minutes daily. If you have some time to talk with them, that's also very important to do that. that. And the, also the one other thing is I suggest that the, sometimes that the, also it's very nice that the, sometimes when you're having normally, so when you're keeping the pictures or the home you love or the family members or the pictures or the tables, or that's also good. That the, then you're looking to them, that will also create the sum of the, your, I mean, the joy in your mind or the happiness in your mind. Because the, when you feel more low, it, it makes the biologically or psychologically when you feel low, it's more easier to get angry because you are feeling the more helpless. When you feel more helpless, then the, it will then you will feel like a more easier to get to angry. So that's why the, when when you like a like a like a person who are having a person in a very uh, marijuana and the, when the state of the very high, they hardly get angry because they are the very high in the state of high. You know? How do you say in the high, isn't it? Hello. I cannot it's correct. You. Yeah, huh? when you're high, when you're high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Yeah, uh, yeah. How do you say after you take marijuana and marijuana stop or what do you say that taking the, that stop or stop or something like that? No, what do you say that? Like when you smoke. The marijuana, smoke, is that what you're marijuana smoke, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the state of the high, because they feel like they are, in, they are when they in the state of the high, they will rarely they will get angry. Because yeah, when you feel more low, then you will get more uh, easier to get angry, no? Yeah. So yeah, mm, sorry that maybe I might be jump out of the topic. In the around the 1970s, Nepal is considered as a like a heaven. Because the, in the around the 1970s, the Nepal the legalized the marijuana, so lots of the people come to Nepal to have the marijuana. Now I think that in America, many states have the legalized the marijuana. So now the American many states become like a, now the have. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, so okay, so yeah, so so that's the thing. Okay, so that's why the what you have to do is uh, sometimes that, that the mental state. To not to makes you low. It's a uh, sometimes it's a very important. It's a very important to the things uh, the more positive sides and the look into that the, your family members and the what the good things you are having with you. So when you look and the see the more the good good things of what you have it, then you will feel like a wow. You are not the some, you are the person. It's uh it, you will feel like you have a lot of things. So then you will feel like a not you will not feel like a helpless and the lonely. So that's why it's a important it's a, to look at the what you are, what you have good things. So that's why the, in the Buddhism practice it talks about the precious of the human rebirth. It's saying that the, we are born as a human. That itself is a blessing. So I think that you have heard saying the count the blessing. No, so you have to count the blessing. Because that's why the, that is the normal day to day when you at, when you feel like a very high. I think that even someone use a very hard shoot, I think that you will not get angry that easy. If you, yeah. So when you have the little bit low or the, when you have feel a little bit stressed, then you will. It's very easy to get angry. So to make yourself high, I'm not suggesting you have the marijuana. Just you can just think about the, what the good things that you are having it. So good things what you have. Like you are born as a human, you are having the families or the friends or the friend circles or the whatever. So good that you can, yeah. 
so you can count the blessing. That's a very important. So, so that's why the that's why the uh, that's why the well, uh, yeah example that uh, what I want to just to share the one thing is that uh, in my day to day life. So my day to day life, lots of time I'm, I'm getting a lot of the things that I can hear, no good things, bad things, good things, bad things. Lots of things come, I, I, the informations I used to get, not the information, news. Like example, the last, I mean, the few days back, that was the new year. So in the morning of the new year, by the new year, I think it's around maybe four, or three or four, like a very early morning, suddenly I got a one message on my cell phone message. And I thought that might be the wishing. Some of my students want to wish a new year, but that is not a wish. I just got to send a message from the South India, from the one city. One of the, my old, one of the, my student, he was Indian gentleman guy. He had, a, he had Indian gentleman guy, and uh, just uh, the friend of the, him, he just sent me and told me he just passed away. He just died. So it's a new year morning when people want to wishing the new. I just got like this news. So, so then the, it is something like that. that but the, what I'm but really, the, that morning, around the morning, early morning, the 3 to the 4 morning a.m. So New Year, I'm in the monastery there, they're going to celebrate and we're having the prayers and pujas. But that morning, that uh, when I received that message, certainly that morning, his face comes in front of the me, no person who died. Really, then also I'll remember that very, I never met, I didn't met him very long. I very long time I didn't met him but the, suddenly I remember the, the, his laughing cheerful face sometimes I used to tell the joke and the, he used to laugh and the, he burst into laugh and the really very differently very loudly he used to laugh these all his face comes in my mind now in the new year morning but that's uh, now what I have to do is I have to accept it no so now I cannot hold that I cannot think that again and again no? I really now I'm looking forward I'm praying for him to born in the pure land and that this is the now I have to do. So same thing in your life. Now the, what I'm saying is sometimes in your life that the, you will hold by the past incidents. That you really should not think too much of the past what happened. You will have to move forward. So in the life, many good things can happen, many bad things happen. When the bad thing happens, it's over. Now you should not think that again and again. So once you think that again and again, that will also take the anger. Because the trigger, the anger, and the, you will think that why it happened to me, and the, this and that, a lot of the thought will come. So that will, it will trigger the anger. So that's also very important to forget about the past, okay? Sometimes it's not that easy. I know that it's not easy. If you lose someone very close to you, it is not that easy. I can understand it's not that easy, but it is not impossible. So there is no use of the thinking that the someone whom you lost, no? So when you think that again and again, it will ticket only your, the, it will ticket the more unhappiness in your mind. So when you lost someone, that the loss, now just think. Because the, I have a, one very good, I mean, the experience with that, and the, uh, in the, that was in Oregon, there's a one gentleman. So we started talking with him, and the, he was telling me he read the books about lots of Buddhism. Because the Buddhism, he got the Buddhism and the, then I asked him that the what's the, and then he was asking me a lot of the questions basically. Then he told me the one very interesting thing. He told me that uh, his wife having the incurable disease. Only that now it's a time is ticking that thing. Now the his goal is that now he's praying that he can meet his wife in the next life. That is now his wish. Sometimes really you have to accept that. No, sometimes when you're having close on the incurable disease, it's like like a, only the. It's like a time bomb, no? It will turn. So, so now he's planning for the second state that to meet her in the next life. So same thing, like the, what I'm saying is that sometimes a lot of things in our life, we have to accept that it happens, no? So we cannot control the, all the things, but we have to accept. And the most important thing is that whatever things which happen in the past, forget bad things, okay? But the good thing happens, you can think it again and again and again and again. Then it will make you so happy. You no, know? but the good things, what happened in the past, what the bad thing happened in the past, just forget it. Some issues, reality, we have to accept. Like that gentleman. Now that his wife ever only certain of the numbers of the day to live. We have to accept it. Now he's thinking to a second plan, thinking to meet her in the her next life. That is a very good way, positive way of the thinking. You know? 
I'm not saying that the, it is, I'm not saying that whether he can meet or not meet, that is a totally different question. But at least that kind of the positive thought really makes you not, makes you feel more, I mean, the hope, no? You will have a more hope. Even the person who is dying will have some hope, no? So that is the thing, okay? Okay, thank you. Today we'll stop here and I will leave for the, some of the question answer session if you have any questions, okay? Now, this is the, today you got, I, I will summarize, sorry, I will summarize the few steps, then we'll keep that uh, con topic continuation and next session, okay? Today, the, what you have to do is the few step homework, okay? Visualize the person whom you dislike or hate, okay? Whenever you generate the anger or negative emotion, uh, Aware that, realize that, and uh, concentrate on your breath. Okay, number one. Number two, trying to meditate on the compassion or love toward the, your close people around you. Okay, around you. Okay, close people. Okay. Number three, count the blessing. Okay, to see that what kind of good things you are having. It. Okay. First, you might think that oh, you don't have any good things. When you look more deeper and deeper, then you will see that a lot of the good things you are having. Let me tell you the one story. That is, the, there is a one hunch, hunchback came into the pub, hunchback came into the pub, and the one master was telling the life is perfect, everything is good, life is perfect. That hunchback person told the master, look at me, I'm the hunchback. Why are you saying the life is perfect? Life is not perfect at all. Look at me, I'm hunchback. So master told the hunchback, wow, you are the most handsome hunchback among the whole other hunchback. So then, same thing like you, you got, so that is something, even now, really that story tells that even the hunchback, no hunchback, even if you think that way, no, he, if you try to feel that he's the most handsome hunchback among the older hunchback, that is a positive thought, no? Whether he is still, that will bring the more, I mean, the joy or the happiness in his life. If you start to compare the himself with hunchback, the person, or oh, not hunchback, then it will create the more unhappiness, no? It's in his hand, no? So I think you have heard the book called The Relaboration in the Palm. So you know, I will change that word and I will say the happiness in your palm. In the real, and actually the happiness in our palm, how we live, is in our palm, okay? Okay, thank you. So any questions? So I will, yeah, leave for, yeah, yeah. Any questions? Hi, Rinpoche. Thank you for the teaching. Yeah. I, I do have a question. You've given okay. lots, uh, lots of antidotes for anger. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the cause of anger. You, you touched on it a little bit about wanting something that you don't have or feeling somehow there was an injustice. Could you talk a little bit more about the root cause? OK. Okay, the root cause is mainly, as I mentioned before, that is anger and uh, another term we call the self-cherishing attitude. When you're focusing too much on the self, sometimes focusing too much on the self and the ego, that is the root cause of the anger. So what you makes you angry, mainly because, that, because you cannot accept it. Because when someone used a hard word. Because of you cannot accept that hard food. Why you cannot accept that hard food? Because it hurts your ego. When you're going to hurt your ego, you cannot accept it. That's why the, you generate the anger. That is the one thing. Second thing is the mainly the anger is the mainly that the anger is the comes when you think that the anger comes because of the ignorance is also another cause of the anger, ignorance when you don't know the reality very clearly. That's why the, you generate the anger. So when we are the kid and we learn the, in the I think that in the, in the way, when we are a kid, I, I think that in the class one or class two story, there's a one book and the story, it's about that the, the story goes like that. It's a story and uh, that story. And the, when I was a kid, I, whenever I read that course book story, I feel so, uh, emotion of that story. Story is about goes like that, okay? There is a mother and uh, one small baby 
and uh, she raised the she raised uh, she raising the mongoose no mongoose no mongoose mongoose and uh, one day what happened is that the mother comes back mother comes and sees the mongoose having the blood on the mongoose the mouth so mother not mother thought that the mongoose killed her baby that's why the the mongoose having the blood on the uh, mongoose the mouth so what did mong- mother when mother just was so angry and the mother killed the mongoose after killing the mongoose when she went inside the her house she saw the baby very safe and the mongoose actually killed the snake which is going to attack the baby so mother was so regret the story is like that this is exactly it's happening in our life first we generate the anger without knowing the proper the i mean the whole the i mean the story because of the ignorance leave that's a lot of things happen like that in our life a lot of times it cases happen like that no sometimes we generate the anger mainly because of the ignorance not knowing that the, what the reality so that's why the sometimes it's very important to put yourself into the other shoe no it's very important when you you have to think that if you are in the other side what will happen okay that is the one other thing. now the third is the causes of that the mainly the anger mainly it comes that because of the habituation that is a, when you get one time angry two time angry, then slowly either without any proper reason you will get angry because it become like your habit no so that's why the you have to change your habit that's a very important to change you to get rid of the old habit what you have to do is you have to put the new habit once you get the new habit then you can get rid of the old habits okay yeah okay more that will uh, i will talk on the next session okay 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 is there any other question hi rampache uh yeah I apologize I was I had to come in to, to the uh the talk a little bit late and uh I have a question that I think it maybe only tangentially or partly related to uh what you were talking about but it's it's been on my mind uh so mm-hmm. I I work in healthcare with okay. a lot of doctors and nurses and uh it's been so hard lately uh with everything that's been going on there's so much the suffering and and people dying and uh most of the people I know are burned out. Um, mm. That term burnout, <clears throat> uh, it's like compassion fatigue from uh, trying to benefit so many people all the time and, and uh, kind of feeling like it's nonstop. Mm. And I just wonder if you had any thoughts about about burnout, like what do we bring to that to, uh, to rekindle our compassion, if you will? Yeah. So I can understand that <clears throat> when you're working in the healthcare and when you see the lots of people dying, I really know that it's really sometimes it's very disturbing, no? Very disturbing. But uh, what you have to do is that uh, people, sometimes when you see the people are dying, and uh, it's a very important to generate the two things. <clears throat> now the, when, the, so when you're seeing the people who are dying, and uh, from the special, from the Buddhist perspective, we are seeing that dying is not an end still we can hope that they can get the better rebirth better rebirth and they can born in the better world better rebirth or they can be born in the buddha's pure land that we can pray that is the number one number two is that uh, number two is that the person dying is the one side of the we have to accept that it is a one of the reality so we should one of the reality and one of the nature of the human life so sometimes we should not go against of it so once they are born they will die that we have to accept it because the if they if they don't die they will suffer more there is a very interesting story that the day is a one this is just a story okay just a story and they is a one very i mean the very powerful king he don't want to die he don't want to die and uh, he, then the, he don't want to die and uh, he just tell that is the any matter that he cannot die and that one old sage told him that the day is a one small pond if you drink that water of the that pond in the very high mountain then you will never die it's very difficult to go get into that mountain so that uh, anyway the king try his best and uh, he bring he try his best and he reach top of the, that mountain and then he, he found that small pond after drinking that water then he will never die so when he was going to drink the water 
there was one crow near the pond and the crow told the king don't drink that water you would regret a lot i drank the water now thousand years i didn't die now it's too much for living now i want to die but i could not so drink that don't drink that water so same story is something like that so sometimes when you are born and when you have to die that is a one of the nature of our nature so we have to accept that but the very sad that some people who die the very young age that's a really very sad that's very really sad i have one experience with the one of the in that is the quite long back in the monastery that in the india monastery that's a very long back and my neighbor and he was not that old i think he was around the 60 in the neighbor and he was at the state of he was dying i went to meet him he knows that he is an incurable disease he knows that and the final stage then i went to talk with him and uh, then he was telling me that he was telling me he feels so lucky he live up to the age of 60 now lots of people get died before the age of 60 so now he have no complaint of the life he would he looks mentally very healthy you know very strong and especially the, this year also the last i mean the two two months back i mean the, around the two or one or two months back i called the one student she was a nun she was a taiwanese nun she was not that old just only one or two years older than me actually i want to ask her to teach the chinese to some of my student but i didn't know that when she was she her voice was a little bit low i told her did you have the flu no 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 she was quite serious issue and then the, then i told her to hold that she was telling me the story and that she was telling me only few days left it for her So she didn't went through the chemotherapy treatment or this treatment because she cannot go through it. Only a few days now she left it. Now he already her body started to swell. Now you imagine how hard will be for me to talk with you. But her mental state looks very stable. But the here the comes the point is that sometimes when you when you see the lot of things that happens. But I know that it's a very sad. But the, you should not think that again and again that issue. Now a lot of the others that you can do help other people, no? even the person who was going to die even if you can help them to live the one more day you are success if the person who are going to die if you can bring the one minute of the joy in their mind you are get success if the person is going to die if you can give the one big smile you are success you have to look that point what we can do we have limited powers we cannot do the whatever we want no we have the limited power but we have to do the at least the best of the we can for them even the person is dying and if you can give a one big smile and if you can just say the small prayer for them that's also the success you should be the happy that the you get that opportunity to do that even some people they don't get that want to do something they won't get that opportunity to do that so you are getting that opportunity to do that so that's why you have to look at what you can do and be happy with what you did just as some person who are going to die and if you give the big smile to them and they just make a one minute happy in their mind success to only so that's why you have to look from the that perspective okay then i always let's say live strong happy okay so <laughs> okay thank you okay today we'll stop here okay thank you so much okay thank you for saying thank you thank you thank you bye